Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to QNAP Live Broadcast from our headquarters here in New Taipei. I'm Rezon, and today here with us again is actually our uh, product manager, Ripple. Hi. Hello, Rezon, and hello, everyone. <laughs> So today we are going to talk about SSD yes. and how we are going to utilize the SSD functions and what we have uh, new things for today. So to announce the topic, uh, we are, uh, as I mentioned, talking about the SSDs, but to be more specific, we're going to talk about Qtier in SSD, right? Yes. And uh, see what are the benefits to up upgrade the SSD capacity or other types instantly. So we this is coming soon with the new QTS 4.4.1, right? Yes. So uh, to better understand this one, we broke it down into actually Ripple did broke it down into four major points where he will be talking and bring us uh, uh, the knowledge in this topic for today. First would be the SSDs need to be upgraded. Yeah. And uh, second would be recreate the QTR SSD tier. When the third topic would be followed with a demo and remove the QT SSD tier. And the last one, but not least, is uh, more scenarios and recap to better understand this topic for today. Therefore, we move with the first one, which is to needed to upgrade the uh, SSDs and the evolution trends and maybe have a conversation about the SSDs first, like how yes. is it going forward on? Yes. Okay, so I'll give this one. Okay, thank you, Rizal. And yeah. let me just continue. And first of all, I want to uh, tell everyone that this year, uh, following last year, 4.3.6, mm. very happily that SSD prices continue falling. Oh, yeah. So right now we can have a, a storage with higher uh, SSD capacity while at the same time enjoy better storage performance for the SMB or personal uh, studio. All the storage, NAS storage can be benefited from this SSD trend. Yeah. And one question raising from this trend is that because we have uh, released QT maybe two or three years ago, and we know uh, one of the major advantage of a QT is that you can store data in the SSD tier yeah. compared to SSD cache. But this also bring a drop down is drop drawback is that you we cannot remove the SSD tier uh, in Q tier yeah. once it has even it has no data because we already created it in the storage port so different from SSD cache because the SSD cache can be removed and reconfiguration anytime we want it so with this trend uh, the companies believe that is important for the user because right now we can purchase uh, SSD with higher capacity at a lower price. Yeah. It's important for us to have a solution for the user to upgrade an SSD tier from a low capacity one to a high capacity yeah, one. Because right now, the higher capacity SSD might have the same price and can easily purchase the SSD nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Another reason that we want to allow users to upgrade their SSD tier is that SSD, uh, maybe before, is just in the beginning, but right now you already have a more and more interface and uh, adapter mm -hmm. that has been brought into the market. Yeah. For example, we can see from the table below that originally we only use SATA interface with the SAD, yeah. but right now you have an M.2, U.2, and PCIe interface, and those use uh, uh, NVNE standard, and yeah. which can reach a higher IOPS. Mm -hmm. And with this technological trend, we believe that SSD price is falling, while SSD performance is actually become higher and higher. And we also seen that in the last year we have announced and released the SSD over provisioning feature. Yeah. And also different company, for example, Intel may introduce the uh, Optin technology yeah. in SSD. And all those new technology may want, may lead IT manager to believe that it is important to replace the SID in Q tier yeah. with a new SID. Yeah. But this bring a challenge to uh, the QNNS user, bring to our user is that right now our uh, Q tier does not allow uh, IT manager to do so because okay. the SID tier already stores some data and they cannot remove the SID very easily. Okay. okay. So for lots of you that didn't familiar with the Q tier, yeah. I still prepare a, a short introduction. Yeah. Qtier is a, a hybrid storage solution for mm -hmm. users on the local NAS, which uh, you can, uh, following from the chart we place in the right hand side, you can see that we can allow the system to, uh, we can create a system, storage system with SSD array and HDD array, 
and we allow the system to move the data not being frequently accessed to the SAD RAID while keep the core data in the capacity tier which is HDDT, okay. HDD RAID so this solution are used to have a higher capacity storage while at the same time be benefited from the SAD performance okay. yes so this is an introduction on the queue tier but let's back to the last topic about how to upgrade the SAD uh, in the queue tier so the first challenge is that how we can, as the SAD price is falling, how we can replace, the, for example, four SAD in the Q yeah. tier into a larger, into larger SAD array. Mm -hmm. We know that for those who already use our QNNS for quite some time, you may know that we have a function called replace this one by one, yeah. which is operated by we unplug a desk yeah. and plug in a new desk and wait for the array to sync and then unplug another desk and plug in another desk. That takes a little <laughs> time, right? Yes. That may be uh, easy for if you only have two SSDs mm -hmm. uh, in a Q tier, but we know in SMB, the IT manager might purchase a rig bond NAS, which might have used uh, four to A SSD. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and the SSD may not be in, uh, it's just in the back of you, so you cannot replace that very easily. And you need to stand in the data center, which is might be very hot for yeah, some, some time, definitely. and this may be a little bit hard to tolerance. So oh, this yeah. is the first challenge that we want the user to replace all the SAD just by a few clicks and very complete and very quickly. Yeah, it's so the first to challenge. They go always one by one. Yes, and secondly, because we have uh, released the SAD over provisioning function for point three point six, there is also one thing that people may uh, we we are consider of because the SAD over provisioning can only enable when we creating a new. SAD array, yeah. and as we previously mentioned, you cannot remove the SAD tier once you start to store data in. So before 4.3.6, for those our old customers that already enable Q tier, yeah. they cannot enjoy the SAD open publishing oh, function, <laughs> which is uh, one of, a little bit pretty. And yeah, so, because the over provision actually is very useful. It yeah. helps you preserve uh, the SSD uh, performance, and yeah. it doesn't. It helps you not to degrade the SSD over time, right? Yes. So the more space you allocate for over, over provisioning, the more beneficial it is. Yes. And another uh, feature that we have for implement and in QTS four point four point one is, as you see, the UI in the left hand, left hand side. Mm -hmm. Right now, our UI can actually monitor the SSD endurance. Oh, we know okay. the other storage company may already have this feature for some time. And finally, we also find a method to monitor the SAD life yeah. accurately. So with this monitoring tool, we believe that it's more and more important for users to use SAD over provisioning to increase the SAD lifespan in a high loading environment. Yeah. So this is the second reason why we want to allow users to remove and recreate the SAD tier in Q tier. And finally, as mentioned, that like SAD interface is continue to evolve. That like it might be an option for IT manager to replace the SAD from, for example, SATA to N.2. Mm -hmm. And here in the chart, I'm demonstrating that an IT manager may want to free those SATA slots to insert higher capacity HDD yeah. while use our QN2 card to create the Q tier SAD array. I see. Yeah. So. This task is uh, this is a, a, a creative method, but cannot be achieved by replacing this one by one, mm -hmm. because the replacing one, this one by one function can only work on this not being inserted into the same slots. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is also another challenge that users face when they want to use a QN2 card. Okay. So after seeing those trend and challenge, yeah. right now let's go. To into recreate. yeah into our new feature on how we allow IT manager to recreate the uh, SAD tier. Okay. So first of all, we have introduced this function remove Q tier SAD tier in 4.4.1, yeah. which is uh, as it just mean we can <laughs> allow user to simply remove the SAD tier and update it back with different SAD configuration later. Mm -hmm. And we are not just doing this this very easily while doing this while allow user to reserve all the data in the storage pool. Oh, I see, yeah. Because we know if before if user want to replace the SAD tier in the Q tier, they can actually 
just back up all the data in the storage mm. pool and then recreate another storage pool but it's also very inconvenient yeah so we know one very important thing is that we want to ensure users don't need to back up data to the other place while at the same time can remove the SID tier so here is how we do this feature as you can see in the bar chart we allow uh, after a few button mm -hmm. we let system to migrate the data from SID tier to SAS tier or SATA tier and we also migrate the pool metadata which is used to okay. show how the pool should be SS should be operated to the SAS or SATA tier if, if there has a SAS tier it will yeah. be primarily located in the SAS tier but all those things, I just want to emphasize one thing is that we will keep the data after SID tier is, has been removed. So oh. users don't need to worry about if I remove the SID tier, my data may be lost. Oh, I see. Yes. So they can, using this remove queue tier SID tier function to remove the SID and then a day then back later, while yeah. move the poor metadata and the SID data back to the SID tier. Okay. So. Yes. So here's just a simple demonstration in the UI is that we can easily remove this tier in three steps. First of all, we open the storage pool management and then we see that uh, there has a new option to remove the Q tier as a tier. And then we let the wizard check if all the array is in ready condition okay. and the capacity tier have enough capacity to store as a tier data. And then we confirm mm -hmm. with user that uh, if the storage Poor service can be start temporary and we start the uh, data migration. Oh, so yeah. the operation starts immediately after this. Three yes. Steps. Yes. So it's very easy, just one yeah. wishes and a few click and everything is done. So here about more detailly about the process, uh, one thing very importantly, as I mentioned when doing this feature, is that we want the user's data can remain safe even if even when we are trying to remove some configuration, mm -hmm. yes, in the NAS. Here, so here you see the process chart. When we start to do the data migration, yeah. if a NAS has been pulled off accidentally or the array has been damaged, okay. uh, after NAS is reboot or the review, red review is complete, it will start migrating the data all over again. At least the same process also happen when we uh, rebuilding the metadata. Oh, okay. And only after those process is complete will we actually remove the SID tier. Oh, so even if, if it doesn't complete it at all, it goes back all over again from the beginning yes. and it starts. So it has to finish the process. Yes, and all the data will be kept and in the SID tier. Actually, we just copy the data until the process oh. is finished. And the last step is we remove the SID tier. Yeah. Yes, so this can ensure the user's data can be uh, safe and return after this process. So because we are migrating, actually copy the data from SID RAID into another tier, so the time requirement for uh, this operation is actually depending on how many data you have in the SSD RAID and the remaining tier performance. So for example, if I remove to uh, 215 gigabytes SSD, it will maybe consume 10 to 20 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, but still this might be uh, rather fast. Yeah. But if we have eight SID, it might be slow, maybe take one hour or two hours. Mm -hmm. This is why we implement those uh, error handling configuration inside our system. This, although this process is very simple, it actually takes our R&D for several months to complete this feature. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is one of the uh, effect we do. So IT manager can very easily using our QT. Okay, so let's just move the demo and see how we can uh, remove the SID tier in the UI. Okay, let's go to the computer. Okay, so you can see that I have prepared a NAS, which is a AT2 series now. And when I open this NAS, and I go to this BJ bar page, you can see that I have some free SID, which is about 900 gigabytes. And I also have a SID that already been used in a Q tier, which is uh, 200 and 40 gigabytes mm -hmm. and so my goal right now is to replace those uh, small capacity SD with oh, a larger okay. one so the first step I need to do is I just go to the storage pool management yeah and then inside I can see the storage pool information and I click this remove remove ultra high speed here and I go to the wizard we just show in a slide yeah. And we can see that, uh, okay, the SID tier has already been, been selected for okay. user. 
And the wizard will check if the capacity has enough, is enough for user to continue this wizard. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to mention here is that our SSD tier can actually have multiple RAID. Oh, okay. So if you, for example, if you have two SSD RAID in a two tier wizard, both RAID will be selected and you will remove all the two RAID at, uh, at the same time. Oh, okay. Yes. So once I press NAS, then the system will uh, remind me that the storage pool yeah. service may be stuck in the middle, and I just click confirm and NAS, and finally he will uh, show the remaining disk operation and the remaining capacity, and I press finish. So you can see that right now it's uh, removing SSD here. Mm -hmm. So just with this simple process, we can remove the SSD rate. Because it might take 20 minutes, so our demo is now uh, finished. Yeah. We can go back to the slide All right. and see how after removing the SSD, we can edit the SSD back into oh, okay. the storage pool. Yeah, we can check that. Okay. All right. Okay, so once the QT SSD tier has been removed, just as I show in the UI, we can use two methods to update a new SSD array and okay. create a SSD tier. If we have a SAS tier and SATA tier, uh, HDD tier, yeah. after the SSD tier has been removed, the storage pool will be remaining as a Q-tier storage pool. Mm. And at this time, we use a expand Q-tier wizard to add the new SSD array into this Q-tier pool. Okay. Yes. But if we only have one tier, for example, SATA HDD tier, once the SSD tier has been removed, the storage pool will become a normal storage pool. And we use another method, which is called upgrade to queue tier, as UI show here. Yeah. And the button can be pressed in the storage pool management page, same as I just demonstrated. And then you can select new SD, and then upgrade the storage pool back to a queue tier storage pool. And at this time, you can select whatever N.2, U.2, or the other SD, whatever you want, mm. or using different reconfiguration. And it is not depending on the old SID slot or OSD configuration. This is how we can add the SID tier back to the Q tier. Okay. So here is a, a simple experiment we done in the QNAM lab, okay. which show that, for example, we use four uh, 215 gigabyte SID, and we want to replace it with 500 gigabyte SID. So we try this and recording the time when we remove and upgrade the SID tier. Because this is a more powerful NAS, which is uh, uh, 1282T, okay. we only require 23 minutes to finish the whole remove and upgrade process. While replacing this, we may need to take another uh, 20 minutes yeah. while including the manually unplug and yeah. insert the four disks and then wait for the rebuild to complete. So we list remove Q-tier SID tier feature, we can actually allow user to easily uh, configure the SID mm -hmm. and try different uh, configuration. So this is both for remove and upgrade yeah. SSD tier. Yes. The, the timing here also. Yes. Oh, okay. That's so it's actually very, very fast. Yeah. fast. Uh, yeah. So here, yeah. let's move to the summarize. And summarize, I will also show uh, more scenario and, the fun, uh, and recap for today's slide. Mm -hmm. First of all, one challenge I didn't mention in the beginning, but it may not apply to all users, is that we know SSD cache and QT are two different functions, yeah. but we usually uh, receive some message from the customer, especially uh, IT manager in the SMB, they may ask what is the difference between yeah. uh, the benefit between SSD cache and QT. Um, we can see from the trial that when we use QN2 as a uh, experiment option, the uh, uh, screenshot and render performance for mm -hmm. SID and QT is actually quite the same. QT may have more advantage in screenshot read and write, and SID cache may have advantage in render read and write. Yeah. But generally, the difference is very small. Yeah. So, the real difference between SID cache and QT is that uh, SID cache is uh, uh, more for real time performance boosting, for example. Mm -hmm. It is being used to accelerating the burst I/O, such as file synchronization yeah. or video editing, and it's, it can also be changed to read and write only SSD cache and with the bypass process yeah. if required. But for me personally, <laughs> QT is a more simple method to oh, configure okay. SSD because first of all, with QT we can actually utilize the SSD capacity 
in the SID tier. Yeah. Yeah, because as we see from the UI, the SID's capacity can also be used to store data. Yeah. And spe this is especially useful for today's because the SID price is continue falling while capacity yeah. become larger and larger. And uh, the major difference between QD and SD cache is actually that is deploying the data block, mm -hmm. the migrating the data block on a schedule base, and when the system is not very busy, if you use auto scheduling, so it actually more suitable for the application with fixed access pattern. For example, web server, mail server, mm -hmm. or VDI hosting, because we know that those operations may only happen on specificity time and specificity yeah. uh, data. So, yeah. so with Qt here, and you have those uh, fixed applications, mm -hmm. the data don't mean to be migrate yeah. between different tier very frequently. And with the IO aware Qt here, we also reserve 20% uh, of the SID tier space for random write real-time oh. uh, aspiration. So combined with all those advantage, Qt here is maybe more suitable for Intern levels IT manager, not inter level. Actually, <laughs> if you want to save some time instead of check check whatever you want to use the read only yeah. or write only cache, maybe you can use Qt here because it, it gives you higher capacity mm. and you also can benefit. You can also benefit from the SID performance. Yeah. And one thing that I didn't mention in the slide is like with Qt here, we also allow you to specifically assign which folder you want to be. Uh, oh. You want to use with uh, SID tier to boost the performance, mm -hmm. but with SID cache, you generally cannot select which folder you yeah. want to assert it with the uh, SID. It's not as specific as that. So, meaning with this one is that you can use either one depending on what kind of work you do. Yes, you have bring us to a, a very good point. Is that we are remove Q tier uh, feature that IT manager can actually right now. A switch between different configuration and yeah. see which one is more suitable for their application. Mm -hmm. Because one thing we receive from IT manager is that we usually cannot uh, measure the SID performance. Yeah. Only, uh, we can only measure the SID uh, performance only after we connect them with the application and see if the application's performance has been increased or not. Mm -hmm. And if not, we might consider to change to another uh, configuration yeah. such as rate type or different uh, for example, SD cache or Qt here, yeah. or the bus type. So here, although we have some suggestion, for example, file server, we can use uh, read and write cache with read 10, because we know it's a more uh, real-time performance, they require more real-time performance boosting, and the, uh, p the file that people may access may not have a fixed pattern. But we know those suggest scenario, it may be different from your application, and yeah. if you want to try different configuration before, in in all time, we might only be able to do so with the SID cache because only SID cache can be removed directly. And right now, we this uh, feature we introduced today, IT manager can easily switch between Qt tier and SID cache, oh, okay. and configure different read type in the Qt tier or different offer version ratio and see what's the benefit. Mm -hmm. So right now, they can very easily create the most suitable hybrid storage. So this is our today's recap is that uh, we allow user uh, to replacing and upgrading the SID tier in QT -tier because the SID price continue falling, yeah. but the performance is continue increasing. And we right now uh, in 4.4.1, we were supporting to remove and re yeah. the SID tier. Uh, the data will be automatically migrate to the HDD tier to prevent, uh, so when you remove SID tier, they ha will have no data loss. Yeah. And finally, you can add the SID back to upgrade to Qt wizard or Qt expansion wizard, so you can use a new rate high, new offer version ratio, new rate, new SID uh, to create the new SID tier. Uh, so uh, this is it for today. Thank you yes. very much. This is the Qt tier to remove yes. and uh, re-add again. So we go back to the live and uh, I want to thank Ripple for being here with us today and for explaining so well to us the Q tier and the new functions that are coming with the QTS 4.4.1. And if you want to see more videos like this or this video, go to live.qnap.com and I'll see you next time on QNAP Live Broadcast. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.